Welcome everybody to this uh, Installer Festival Live, uh, where today we're going to discuss the Mosati mixing valves. My name's Ed Morris and I am Technical Manager for Al Technic. Um, Al Technic is a company, we are part of the Cleffer Group by state of, of Northern Italy. Um, we operate globally, so we're an international company where we operate out of circa 17 different countries with coverage worldwide for our supply chain. Um, Al Technic ourselves, we're based in Stafford, where we have our own offices and our own warehousing. Um, and we, as a group, as a Cleffy group, turn over between 350 and 400 million euros. So we're quite a substantial size of organisation. So like I said, today we're going to talk about thermostatic mixing valves. And we're going to talk about the, the different functions. So let's have a look uh, at what we're going to be discussing today. So thermostatic mixing valves or TMVs. We're going to look at the reasons why we use these valves, reasons we install them, the range that we have to offer, the different ranges or the different valves that we have in our range, the approvals. So what approvals do we have for the valves and what do they cover and what do we need those for? The fail safe function. So one of the most important functions of the valve itself and one of the most misunderstood functions as well. So we're going to cover the, uh, the fail safe function and we'll also have a look at the service and maintenance of the valves as well um, and, and, and what we need to do when it comes to the service and maintenance of the valves. So. So sit tight, uh, we'll make a start and hopefully we'll find this useful. But first of all, we'll have a look at why we use TMVs or why do we fit TMVs and, and we'll look at the situation. So since back in the early 1990s, a method to evaluate and certify anti-school temperature control devices was in high demand. And this was both in healthcare and domestic markets. This demand was escalated uh, in the early 90s when the United Kingdom uh, Health Service or the NHS required an enhanced and robust test regime to, for thermostatic mixing valves or TMVs uh, that could react to a cold water failure. So we'll talk about the thermal you know, shut off and whatever. That's what we're referring to. Now, since hot water is a, is a primary method of control of, of the purification of Legionella in water supply systems, uh, in many of the healthcare facilities, temperature control devices that perform as claimed are extremely, extremely important. Now, according to the National uh, Burn Care Review, there's 250,000 burn injuries in the UK each year, and which is a vast majority of these are caused or result of scalding. And the government recognises these risks and has made a mandatory for all new buildings uh, with baths fitted to have a TMV. So that's new build buildings, but also if you're renovating bathrooms, so you can't any form of renovation within a bathroom, you have to put yourself a TMV under the bath. The reason they specify on baths <clears throat> It's because we refer to full immersion, so where you can fully immerse your body in, in this hot water, creating a problem. So that's what we refer to when we're talking about the, the installation on baths as well. So, so what is a TMV and what are the functions? So TMVs accurately control water temperatures for bathing, showering, hand water, hand washing and bidets. Uh, and they're designed to, to maintain the desired water temperature, even when the incoming water pressures or, or flow rates change. So because the way it's got a thermostatic cartridge inside there, that can adjust to react to what water temperatures are. So when we look at the, at the functional characteristics, <clears throat> we obviously have a hot supply, we have uh, a cold supply, and we have the mix area in the center of the valve itself where we have that thermostatic element. Now the thermostatic element is, is a liquid filled cartridge. Obviously it reacts to the different temperatures around it via expansion and contraction, et cetera, which may, <clears throat> allows it to move up and down and modulate the temperatures and sustain the, the set pressure or the set temperature, sorry, that we've set. Now, obviously, you know, it's, it, because it works off temperature, it's really good to keep the hot water as hot as we can and the cold water as cold as we can because it gives the valve the best opportunity to start working and especially when we look forward when we start talking about the foul safe function itself as well um it's important that we look at why we you know why we keep those temperatures quite hot um, and, and understandably so so the foul safe function <clears throat> is arguably the most important feature and this will stop the extremes of hot or cold water from entering the faucet a common misinterpretation is that the TMV will completely isolate the flow, whereas this is not requirement within the standard. And we'll look at the standard a little bit later on as to what we we'll refer to when we're talking about cold water shut off or the fail side function. Now you see there that we say we've got hot and cold. Now, obviously, we are trying to protect the end user from getting scalded, so we don't want any excessive hot water that can come through to the valve itself. But also what we're trying to protect as well is from cold water or thermal shock from cold water. So if, for instance, somebody is having a wash and they're washing their face or washing their body, expecting to get a warm water delivery, that supply all, all of a sudden becomes cold 
it can create a shock uh, and what it can mean is that people can start to jump back and create themselves injuries etc but you obviously people with heart conditions and whatever. it can have an effect so what we have to do is make sure that we can we can do that <clears throat> on both ways so hot and cold both work in different ways so you know when the hot water uh, immerses itself over the cartridge it expands and it closes the hot outlet vice versa when the cold one it contracts it pushes the shuttle down with the force of the spring so it shuts off either the hot aperture or the cold aperture to prevent that water coming through the valve and, and creating problems itself now the reasons that we fit TMVs is, is, is obviously we spoke about was to protect the skin from school. So we have a quick look at, at burns and burn degrees. So a first degree burn is what sits in your epidermis. That's the first few layers of skin. So when you burn your epidermis, you tend to get like, you know, a red mark or maybe a slight blister into the skin. And that's what we class as a first degree burn. Second degree burn, now we start to get deeper. So we go into the dermis, which is where your, um, you know, sort of where your hair follicles are generated within your skin. So we're taking the depth of, of burn deeper now. And then when we go down to the third degree, we're down to the hypodermis. That's where we're getting down to where your fatty tissues are, where you, your, your veins start to, to circulate around your body as well. So we're a lot deeper, a lot more dangerous the deeper we go, obviously. Um, so we have to protect from those. And if we have a quick look at the time, uh, the time exposure in minutes and seconds of how we can get a burn. So, you know, we're talking about a child getting third degree burn. So the depth of the fatty tissues, <clears throat> you know, we're talking 60 degrees, which is what a lot of people will store their hot water up within their premises. One and a half seconds to try and pull the hand away in burning that quickly it's not easy for a child you know and even for, for adults itself you know we can go third degree in in in, in at 65 degrees um you know with third degree burns can can take seconds as well uh second and third degree burns so <clears throat> it's very important that we understand that you know how quickly this can take place you know 60 degrees second degree uh, burn for a child 0.7 seconds you know it's as quick as you can blink um, and that's how quickly it can be so whether you be washing your hands um, and, and we're having that issue or again we spoke about full immersion so we speak about people getting into a bath if you don't check that bath and you get in it's going to create all sorts of problems if, if we're sitting at stored hot water temperatures so People with reduced ability and the perceive the risk or react to hazardous situations, for example, those with mental or physical disabilities, are also at greater risk of injury. Um, and TMVs help to protect the population from these kinds of scalding injuries. Over three quarters of severe scalds uh, are suffered by children at the age of five years of age, um, and almost three quarters of the fatalities are people over the age of 65 and over. Um, and hot water is responsible, uh, hot water baths or hot bath water is responsible for the, the highest number of fatal and severe scald injuries in the home. And, and every year, about 20 people die as results of scalds caused by hot bath water. And a further 570 are suffering, you know, very serious scalding. So we're talking about scarring and all the all the nasty things that come with when you burn your skin. Um, so, you know, we're talking about, we're trying to protect the young, we're trying to protect the elder, we're trying to protect the, the those of, you know, who, with mental, physical disabilities who may not have a perception of risk the same as what able-bodied people do. Uh, young children and, and older people are most at risk from bath water scalds because their skin is so much thinner and therefore it's less tolerant to the higher water temperatures than that of, of other other age groups and middle age groups. So as a result of this, they sustain scalds more quickly at lower water temperatures and often with greater depth. So remember, we spoke about the depth of burn and the, the time exposure versus temperature. It's a lot quicker when it comes to young children and the elder because their thin is so much, their skin is so much thinner. Um, so that's why we sort of, you know, use different applications in different areas as well. A few of the campaigns that sit around it, so Water Safe, the Children's Burn Trust, the water, Hot Water Burns Like Fire and ROSPA, those are all campaigns that are trying to raise awareness of, of, of how we can deal with the sort of um, the issue of scalding hot water and, and protecting people from those. So they're all worthwhile cause it, it, it's good to, to sort of get and understand what they're saying and the message that they're trying to promote as well. So always a good one to uh, to try and have a look at. So Different range types of TV, so there are different kinds of mixing valves or blending valves, however people want to call them. And we'll have a look at what those are now. So we'll take, for instance, for the start, we'll take a heat source. Um, and these are used with central heating systems where, the, where water is used as a medium. Uh, tempering valves uh, for use on hot water heat distribution systems. So if we're storing centralised hot water, we're storing it in a clarifier or a hot water storage tank, and we store it at dangerous temperatures at 80 degrees plus, then that's where we fit a heat source pump. 
they have a high flare rate suitable for use on the floor heating applications and also uh, they can, the water can be stored at a high temperature. We talk about the risk of Legionella and we talk about how we store water at safe temperatures. The hotter the water, the less chance we've got of any kind of bacterial growth within the system. So if we are storing at hot temperatures, you know, 75, 80, 85 degrees, we'd fit a heat source valve to the to the cylinder to then start circling at 60, 65 degrees to then blend down again when we get to the tap um, where we need it. Group control. Uh, so these provide a uniform distribution temperature for all hot water outlets in, in a household, not just a household, but, you know, we're talking about uh, sort of, you know, public facilities where we might have showering or multiple outlets on uh, sinks or basins uh, and taps and showers. This is where we'd use a group control valve itself. They've got high flow rates. They've got a bigger body where they can transfer more water through to deliver these to, to multiple outlets. And they offer temperature stability. So, you know, you're going to set that water to 42 degrees. It's going to deliver water at 42 degrees. So we're safe when we, we shower in. Point of use, which is probably something or probably the, the, the one that we come across the most, and these are designed to, to be fitted to a single outlet. Um, so designed for single point applications, such as individual showering, hand wash basins or bath fillers. Um, so these are the ones that we see underneath baths, underneath sinks, under, you know, with a shower mix or whatever. These are installed there as a point of use because they're designed for one outlet and one outlet only. Uh, and they offer a high level of protection against scalding and also against thermal shock. So we've spoken about the reasons why we fit these valves. These are the reasons why. Now, <clears throat> we hear a lot of talk about TMV2 and TMV3 and, and, and what are they and what are the differences? So we'll take a little look now. What is a what are the differences between TMV2 and TMV3 as an overshot, as an overview? Obviously, the standards there for people to really they want to get a deeper in-depth view of it. Um, but these are the main reasons why. So TMV2 uh, fits is designed for use in domestic environments, um, and they work with water pressures between 0.1 bar and 5 bar. And they're ideal for, for use in households and other domestic settings. So TMV2 is always the valve that you will see installed in a domestic property or domestic dwelling. Um, it's a standard one that go into your bath, your sink, your shower, but they'll always look for a TMV2 approval because they have their test criteria there that they deem it to be safe to be used in a residential dwelling. Now TMV3 uh, and a TMV3 fitting is specifically designed for use within healthcare environments. So we talk about hospitals, uh, elderly care, etc. Um, hospitals, care homes and other similar settings must use these. Installing TMV2 valve is not suffice, so it will not suffice. TMV3 is adhered to the NHS uh, DO8 regular standard, whereas the TMV2 ex uh, um, example adheres to the two British standards uh, and well, they will not meet the NHS requirements. So we talk about BSDN 1111 and 1287 are the two ones that surround the TMV2 requirements, so high and low pressure. But DO8 for TMV3 is what we're talking about for, for the NHS and for these healthcare standards. And TMV3 things are also designed to work at much higher water pressure, so from 0.2 to 10 bar as well. So the different test criteria is de different design standards. Yes, you know, we, we're mixing water to deliver a safe outlet, but it's the way the valves perform in different scenarios. So there is a big difference between TMV2 and TMV3, and a TMV2 valve will not meet the strict test criteria what is set out for, for TMV3. So it's very important that you put the right valve into the right application itself. So our range itself as our technic, uh, we have our 5213 series, which is the merchant mixing valve. It's the one that you go into into any of your merchants and, and take off the shelf. Um, you know, this the, the performance is pretty similar. So we have a 30 to 50 degrees um, adjustment for the for the mixed outlet to plus or minus two degrees on stability, maximum working pressure 10 bar, max working pressure on dynamic is five bar. Uh, inlet pressure ratio five to one. You can have five bar of hot cold hot. Uh, hot supply and one bar of cold or vice versa so cold and hot um, one thing a very important thing to remember on mixing valves and this is when you're doing foul safe testing or when you're doing any kind of commissioning is that we have to have a 10 degree delta between the the hot inlet and the mixed outlet so it has to maintain so if you want to set that to 38 degrees the minimum you can pull in is 48 degrees and when you're doing your foul safe testing or when you're doing insulation or commissioning make sure that you've got raw hot water to that valve before you start doing any testing because otherwise it won't work there's no point pulling 37 degrees through if you've got that thick to 30 38 and you expect it to do a foul safe it won't work the hotter the water the better so when you do any kind of commissioning always make sure that we're pulling through pouring through raw hot water. Uh, minimum fly rate for stable operation is four litres a minute. What you will notice is we do have TMV2 and TMV3 approval on this valve, so we meet all criteria on the new standards. So the new standards that were released, the valve meets both those on TMV2 and TMV3, so it's very important that you get you know, a well-certified and well-tested valve for your installation itself. 
Uh, so the 5211 and Mixcal 3, um, TMV2 approval on this one. So it's got a fast safe thermostatic mixing valve. It complies to uh, 1287. Uh, uh, adjustment range 30 to 65, maximum inlet temperature 85. Again, you've got that 10 degree delta T uh, for the valve. So it's always important that you know what your incoming hot and cold temperatures are, so you know what your valve has been served with. And a valve will only give out give out to you what you what you give the valve. So give it the good fuel; it'll give you good a good workout. Uh, the 5212, uh, so care flow. So this is TMV3 approved. So we spoke about that. This is for healthcare environments. Um, and this is designed for, for DOA and BS7942 for use in the care homes. Um, again, similar, so we still need to maintain that 10 degree delta. I can't stress how important that is. You know, with the amount of phone calls that we get saying, oh, my valve isn't fail safe, but the hot supply isn't hot enough to function. You know, you've got to make sure that what the, the supply criteria is meeting what we as manufacturers state the valve needs to receive. 5230 mix how mix pro so this is a group mixing valve so we spoke about the in for use within shower environments or multiple use outlets etc this is the valve that we're using there you can see there's a couple of different uh, temperature adjustment ranges depending on the size of the valve itself temperature stability of, of plus or minus two degrees but the one thing you'll notice about the mix how mix pro is that it does have a much larger body so we have a much larger area for mixing the water um, to, to get that high flow right through to serve multiple outlets. When it comes to size, you know, one of the questions is, well, how many showers can I fit to your mixing valve? It's all down to flow rate. These things are sized on flow rate. If you've got 10 showers that are going at 20 litres per minute, or you've got 10 showers ago, 10 litres a minute, obviously there's a huge difference because the demand is massively changing um, through the valve itself. So always size your valve off the flow rate um, and not just necessarily off your line size or the demand that you needed to work off. Uh, the 5218, so the tempering valve or a DTC valve, this is the valve that we spoke about that would sit directly onto a hot water storage cylinder. Um, again, we've got the approval, so 15092. Uh, we've got a uh, pressure re re ratio of 2 to 1 on these ones. Um, minimum temperature difference between the hot water inlet and the mixed outlet is 10 degrees for best performance. Again, keep your hot water hot. That's the, the, you know, the hotter the water, the better the valve will perform. Um, you can see we have a higher uh, temperature setting range, so we can set up to 65 degrees standard mixing valve we sort of go between 40 and 50 degrees we're going up to 65 and it's because we're taking raw hot, raw hot water at 90 degrees or 85 degrees we're going to blend it down to a safer temperature of 60 degrees or 55 to start circulating around um the the uh around the, the system that we're trying to feed again uh, plus or minus two degrees on stability uh, various flow rates uh, on the valve, depending on what size of valve it is that you use and what size of the body is. So, so that's our range uh, of what we've got. There's a new valve that we're coming through at the moment. We're just going through the approval process, which I think we're, we're pretty much there with now. Um, it's a valve that is based on our 5213, so based on the merchant mixing valve. Specification is all the same. Difference that we have on this one is that we have what we call a thermal override function. Um, and what this function is there to do, so we can disengage the cartridge, we can pull raw hot water straight through the valve. Obviously, you try to another valve, it would fail safe because you're trying to pull hot water through. What this does is disengage that to allow you to thermally disinfect your whole system all the way through to the outlet. Um, so it's a standard mixing valve, works exactly the same, but whenever you're working on a service regime, you can walk up to it, install that special key which comes with the valve itself and you just disengage the cartridge let it override uh, and it will pull the pull the raw hot water through to ensure that you've got decent uh, decent disinfection approval so we spoke about what the approvals were um so dtc valve is bsdm 105092 uh, these are the ones that, that sit on the stored water um, and it's designed to for stored water capable of exceeding 80 degrees plus of the normal operations so that's what we spoke about we're storing hot water, we're making sure we've got the right valve on there. TMV2, so we have BSEN 11.11.2017 and BSEN 12.87.2017. So those are the new standards. So when you are purchasing a mixing valve, always make sure that the valve covers those two standards. One is high pressure, one is low pressure. Some people only have approval to the high pressure version because they can't get the valve to function under low pressure. We have both. We are about will perform well under both conditions. So ensure that when you are purchasing the valve, you know, go for the, the, the correct standard, the most up-to-date standards to make sure you've got your, your full protection as well. Um, and also obviously TMB3, uh, so HDMO 401, so DO8, 
uh, BS7492 as well. Those are the specifications for those valves. The amount of times I get people say, you know, what's the cheapest valve? I understand that people are driving by price, but these valves are there for safety. So we need to make sure that, you know, we, we can't necessarily manufacture a cheap valve and keep it safe. We have to put all the, the, the right stuff to it. So, you know, it's very important that we choose the right valve for the right application not just necessarily based on price because you wouldn't want to be standing in front of a coroner explaining why the valve that you installed wasn't quite right because you want to shave two or three pound off off the, the cost so please remember that when we're moving forward um so Building regulations or Part G for the prevention of scalding stipulates that acceptability of inline blending valves can be demonstrated in compliance with relevant European standards of 11, 11, 2017 and 12, 87, 2017. So those are the standards where we spoke about uh, high and low pressure. Uh, this standard specifies general construction, performance and material requirements for PN10 thermostatic mixing valves or TMVs and includes test methods, test methods for verification of mixed water temperature at uh, the point of use below 45 degrees itself. Um, so that's what the standard states. Again, those are just front covers of what those standards look like. They're all available from BSI. Um, if you are unsure you want to get a copy, you can contact those guys and buy a copy of the standard. It will tell you everything to do with the, the test criteria when it comes to these valves itself. So the fail safe function you know, is something I think is, is massively misunderstood within the marketplace. So in the event of a cold water failure, the thermostatic mixing mechanism will automatically shut down the flow to prevent discharge of dangerously hot water. The flow will also be shut down in the event of hot water supply failure to prevent thermal shock. In the event of a sudden supply uh, temperature increase or a spike, the TMV will quickly but not absolutely instantly adapt to deliver water temperature. So we are seeing spikes if there is an inconsistent supply. The valve will react to that as best it can because it is a thermostatic element, um, but it's not instant, it needs some time to react. So we have to be aware of that. So the valve safe function, as we spoke before, people think I need to isolate the cold and the, and the valve should shut off straight away. It's not the case and it's very important that we remember this. So this is one of the most important things that we're going to talk about today is this valve safe function. So what we'll look at is we'll look at what we're looking at. So what does the standard state? So this is the snippet from the standard and it says uh, rising mixed water temperature from the actual initial setting. So what we have to remember is we're always going to work off what the initial setting of the valve is. So we will use for this for this exercise, we will use a temperature of 38 degrees as a mixed outlet. So what we're saying here now, so this here is a plus a plus two in degree increase. So we've set at 38. We've seen you've, you've turned the cold water off. You then you've got your thermometer and then you see an increase of two degrees. So a lot of people expect I'll turn the cold water off. It shuts off straight away. If you're still recording 38 or 40 degrees through the outlet, then what the standard states is that valve can still run for 10 plus seconds. There is no analog because what it's saying is you're not delivering an unsafe temperature. Yes, you've isolated the cold. But what's happening is you're still delivering only two degrees above what your set temperature of 38 degrees is. So there's no specific time that that valve can run on for as long as you're living 48 or 40 degrees which is safe it will continue to run now if we see an increase of 10 degrees so if we then see an increase of 48 degrees so we can see that it's pulling really hot water through the valve itself then the reaction time that you can run on for is 0.25 seconds so what we what we're working on here is we're working on the temperature scale versus a time scale so please don't just turn off a, an isolation valve and turn the cold off and look at the tap and go, well, that's valve because there's water still running out of it. There's a process that has to be taken place here. And this is what the test standard states, that you have to record what that temperature is versus the time that it runs on for. So it's very important that we do that. So measure your thermometer under the, under the tap that's coming out, tell what the temperature is, and then record what time it runs on for. So temperature versus time. There are slight uh, um, conflictions when we talk about some people talk about the measurement volume of water itself. But for this fast safe function within this standard, within TMV3, we are talking about temperature versus time. It's very important that, that we remember that. Service and maintenance wise, so where do we start? So the main contribution to full thermostatic mixing valve operation is supply conditions. Um, and we need to ensure that, hot uh, that both hot and cold supplies are within specification. Uh, these as suggested previously must have a hot inlet uh, temperature of 10 degrees above the mixed outlet temperature and a cold supply inlet temperature of that at least 10 degrees below the mixed outlet temperature in lieu of manufacturer's instructions. And one of the things the standards always state is that we have to refer back to one manufacturer's state because each valve will work in its own independent way. Providing the temperatures are correct and the pressures and flow may be an issue, and this should be verified as, as conforming to the manufacturer's instructions as well. So make sure, are we hitting that five to one ratio? Are we getting the correct amount of flow rate through? You know, what's going on inside the pipework? It's important that we know that. 
So what's next to case? The above is good, but we need so we need now to expose the working parts of the thermostatic mixing valve and check for debris. Uh, now we have the working parts exposed available. These should be visually checked for their integri uh, integrity or degradation. And the thermostatic shuttle, along with the O-rings, should be lubricated using a RAS approved uh, silicon grease. So this is the area here that we're looking at because this is a moving part within the thermostatic mixing valve. The shuttle will move up and down, so we need to make sure it's plenty of grease in there. The O-rings are greased and that there's plenty of movement in there to allow the valve to work. You know, these valves should be fit with isolation valves with strainers. You can't pull debris through there. You can imagine these are quite susceptible to, to that kind of, um, you know, sort of image uh, issues that you can get through there, pulling debris through. So you have to make sure that we're looking after the valve and keeping the system nice and clean when we work in that. So if it's still not working and there's something, you know, with the thermostatic mixing valve is clearly not functioning correctly and due to the potential harm of the faulty mix, uh, thermostatic mixing valve, um, it's always good, you know, if in doubt, change it out. There are service packs available for the valve, so you can change the springs, you can change the cartridges, you can change the shuttles. Um, so it might be worthwhile just giving it a service as well. Um, so it's very important that, that, you know, that we check this. There are recommendations as well with service periods, uh, especially on TMV3, you have to check it sort of eight to 10 weeks after installation go back and check you have to keep checking that the mixed temperatures or the mixed outlets are still doing what they should be doing um, but all that is stated out in the standard and it's also in the IOMs of, of, of certainly of our valves and I think other manufacturers as well put that service or that commissioning period within the, the IOMs as well so it's important that we read those so quick look at the installation types uh, point of use mixing valves so we spoke about point of use uh, so point of use mixing valves can be installed in accordance to the manufacturer's instructions and first and foremost, so what we say as manufacturers is what we should work to. Um, considerations should be made to the fitment locations. These valves will need to be maintained regularly to ensure correct operation. Uh, the complete installation should consist should consist of appropriate isolation integral strainers. We spoke about that to make sure you can carry it out. If you don't have isolation, how are you going to carry out a cold water shut off? It's not going to be possible. Um, and the mix outlet pipe wet lead should be as small as feasibly possible. So we want to try and reduce the amount of dead legs because don't forget, you know, we're putting prime bacterial growth temperature through these. You know, we're putting 40, 45 degrees water through there to prime for the growth of leaves, you know, so keep those dead legs as short as we possibly can. And also leave the valve accessible. You know, I've been to sites before where mixing valves have been boarded in, they've been put behind IPS panels or beyond tiling panels. These valves are serviceable items, so we have to make sure that what we're doing, um, you know, the valves are accessible for maintenance. And for TMVs not within a unit, a useful guide uh, to recommend the distances from the unit is the HGMO4 uh, published by the, the Department of Health and their paragraph of 9.49 which reads as follows. Particular attention should be given to ensure that pipe work containing blended water is kept to a minimum. Generally, the downstream dead leg should not exceed two metres and the complete length of the spur should not exceed three metres. So if you can't fit it directly under the unit, can't fit it directly under the bath, then you have to make sure that you do not exceed that two or three metre length rule when it comes to, to where we are uh, with pipe lengths, again, for the, the growth of bacteria. So where can we install group blending thermostatic mixing valves? Uh, typically, root blending valves will be used to supply high volumes of water to numerous outlets. So we spoke about multiple outlets of showers and baths, etc. Given their usage, they should be potentially be quite distant from the outlet. So provision should be made, if necessary, to sanitise mixed outlet pipe work. Evolutions within group blending have meant that manufacturers are able to offer automated systems where the mixed outlet pipe work can be correctly sterilised uh, with a form of thermal disinfection on a programmable basis. So it's OK fitting a mixing valve, a group mixing valve, absolutely. But in the design and the install of that, you have to take into account you're going to have to sanitize that pipe work somehow whether that sanitation take place via uh, via thermal disinfection or chemical disinfection you have to make sure that your valve is capable of doing that so a standard typical um, installation with a group blending valve or group mixing valve um, on a conventional TMV so you can see hot water storage um, and we go now and, and we're feeding the outlets uh, where we need to be. Now we spoke before about we mentioned previously about having a, a, a device that can can automatically do that. And this blow is your typical installation use a hybrid valve, which is a facility to thermally disinfect the mixed outlet pipe work. And this is achieved by controlling a secondary pump and a thermostat electron. So it's a mixing valve. It's got a control unit on there. It's got a probe in the mixed outlet, but it's also got a probe out in the system uh, in one of the far zones that you're looking to disinfect. And what that valve will do is it will open itself up and it will draw raw hot water through to sanitise that pipe work. Once the probe further down the line has been met, once that temperature has been risen for a set amount of time, it will then shut itself back down again and return to be a normal mixing valve. It can be linked to a BMS system or any kind of control system you've got within the, the, uh, the building itself. 
but that is an automatic flushing system or, or, or filling system to be able to, to disinfect your pipe. It's called a ledger mix. We have a ledger mix and a ledger mix 2.0, um, but the very good valves for using on certain BMS systems are where you need to chlorinate or, or sorry, thermally disinfect large amounts of pipe work itself. So we spoke again about, as well about DTC valves or thermostatic mix valves for stored hot water. So the DTC thermostatic mixing valve uh, are designed to temper stored hot water in the production of said water is unstable or highly variable. These valves will temper water of 80 degrees plus, given a uh, usable point of distribution and temperature. This stable temperature will be achieved even if there is fluctuations in pressure and temperature. So typical installation here, directly off your hot water cylinder, off to the system, and then you come turn. Uh, below is one with a recirculation loop, so you can fit it with recirculation loop as well another way that people do installs and also with a uh, recirculation loop and cylinder return so there's various ways that we can install these valves um, to make sure that we get in what we need to be doing um, but these valves are, uh, are are in you know there's various installations that we can use these valves on so we cover it across on those ones so just to wrap up now as a bit of a conclusion you know what do we do so first of all, we need to stop and, and, and assess is there a potential risk of excessive outlet temperature and generally when you're using a hot water or, or hot or stored hot water there's going to be that risk of scalding so first of all is to identify and assess the risk that we've got then we have to think about so identify the installation type and apply the relevant condition standard is it tmv2 is it TMV3? Is it going to be a DTC valve that we're going to need to install? So it's down to, 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 to identify what kind of valve we need. Is it domestic? Is it healthcare? And apply the relevant standard to make sure you've got the correct valve and do not install a TMV approved, TMV2 approved valve into a hospital or in an NHS environment because you will be contravening every single regulation going and you'll be in a lot of trouble. And finally, we act, so we act advice, fit and commission. So we've acted, so we've identified the risk, we've identified the standard we need to fit to. We go and we purchase a valve, we advise what we're going to do, we'll fit and we'll commission and we'll commission against what the, the standards or what the manufacturers state. So it's very simple, stop thinking, act, it's just the way you need to do it. Um, and that's how we sort of work and that's how we, we try and push the message through to people is to identify the risk, uh, how we're going to manage that risk and then we install the, the correct valve to, to make sure there's no risk available. And, and that's it for today. So thank you so much for your time in, in listening today. I hope that there's some stuff in there that you've that you found sort of relevant and useful. Um, there's plenty more information uh, across different platforms that we work. So we have our website, which is www.altechnic.co.uk. We have a Twitter page. We have a LinkedIn page. We have a Facebook page as well. Um, so head across to any of those sorts of pages. We update it weekly, daily uh, with various information and various documents that, that we have and share with people. So please do follow us on social media um, where we'll, we'll keep you updated with everything that's going on especially within our company but also within the industry as well and um, so we like to do as much communication as we can so again thank you all for your time i do really much appreciate it uh, i hope you will stay safe i hope you will stay well um, and i hope that we can all meet up soon a, a live event as opposed to a stream so thank you again